Fritzy here with Static Fight Football, another uh, bowl preview. This time it'll be for Friday, December 27th. There will be five games on it on that day. Quite a few pretty interesting match matchups. Uh, um, actually, a lot of really interesting matchups. Starting with North Carolina, North Carolina Tar Heels from the ACC going going six and six facing the Temple Owls from the American Athletic Conference. They're going eight and four in the Military Bowl at noon on Friday. Uh, North Carolina, they 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 snuck back in. Mac uh, Mac Brown his first his first year back in coaching. Um, First time back at coaching in North Carolina, which he coached to great heights in the 90s before he went and won national a national title with Texas. Uh, North Carolina came in averaging over 31 points a game, which is 49th nationally, 25th in pass offense, 14th in total offense. Scoring defense is fine, 50 further score, first in scoring defense, a bit basically about average in uh, defense. Um, but this is it. That, now keep track of this name for possible Heisman uh, consideration next year and the year after. Quarterback Sam Howell, a true freshman, set the uh, record for most passing touchdowns by a true freshman, which Trevor Lawrence at Clemson just set last year with 30. Already this year, Sam Howell has 35 touchdown passes to only 7 interceptions, passing for 3,347 yards. They have a lot of uh, pretty key pieces on offense. It's possible they could have two 1,000-yard rushers and two 1,000-yard receivers. It's unlikely. It's most likely they'll have 2,000-yard receivers, but running back Michael Carter, he's run for 919 yards, so he, he maybe could get it. Javante Williams, he's run for 848 yards, so maybe he, if he has a, a huge game, could get 2,000 rushing. Then you got both receivers, Diami Brown, 46 catches, 947, 11 touchdowns, and Daz Newsom, 64 catches, 947, and 8 touchdowns. So one of those two should get 2,000 yards receiving, if not both of them. Then linebacker Chad Surratt, 110 tackles and six sacks as well. So they have a really, really strong, fun offense to watch. Whereas Temple, they're more a little more about defense. They're uh, 27 points per game on offense, which is 76 nat nationally. They're 42nd nationally in scoring defense, 47th in total defense. They had 39 sacks in the year and 93 tackles for loss, which is 11th and 17th uh, respectively. Quarterback Anthony Russo, 2,733 yards, 21 touchdowns, 11 picks. Running back Ramon Davis, he could get 2,000 rushing yards. He's got 900 rushing yards now. Wide receiver Jaden Blue could get, should get 2,000 yards. He's got 87 catches for 975. Brandon Mack, 56 catches for 886 in a year, could possibly get 1,000. Uh, then defensive back, defensive end, sorry, Quincy Roche, 13 sacks, 18 tackles for losses. 13 sacks is sixth. And nationally, uh, Temple's been very much up and down this year. They uh, they were the only team to beat Memphis so far this year. Um, they normally have a, a better defense even than that. Their their offense can move the ball at times, but sometimes they go they go uh, cold. They're very much an inconsistent offense. North Carolina they've been like the cardiac heels all year long. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, what, eleven of their twelve games or ten of their twelve were decided by seven points or less, or by a score or less all coming down to the wire. Um, I think this will be a pretty pretty good game. Like I said, Temple, they normally play teams that might be better than them. And North Carolina, they're 6-6, six and six, but with their offense, I that's 6 in my head. But Temple always plays these teams well. However, I think I'm going to go with North Carolina in the end to come out on top. Uh, might have a little bit too much on offense. I'm telling you, watch Sam Howell, the quarterback for North Carolina, uh, there. All right, jumping in, 3.20 later in the day, Michigan State Spartans uh, going on against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons in the New Era Pinstripe Bowl. Michigan State, this is pretty much strength versus strength. Michigan State is one of the best defenses in the country. Wake Forest has one of the better offenses in the country. Michigan State defensively, they're 37th in scoring, 15th in rushing, 44th in passing, and 18th in total defense. They have 36 sacks and 85 tackles for loss. Offensively, they're 100th hundred, hundredth in the nation in basically everything, averaging 22 points per game. Quarterback, Lyon Lewerke, 2,759 yards, 16 touchdowns to 12 picks. Not great. Running back, Elijah Collins, he's run for 892, so he may be able to get to 1,000. Wide receiver, Cody White, 58 catches for 825 and 5 touchdowns. Then defensive end, Kenny Willicks, is 9 sacks on a year. Uh, he should be pretty... Um, he, he'll be playing on Sundays anyway in the NFL. 
soon. Then you got Wake Forest out of the ACC, 8 and 4, averaging over 32 points per game, 47th in rush offense, 18th in pass offense, 12th nationally in total offense. Uh, defensively, they're a little below average, 79th in scoring, 79th in total. Um, they are plus 7 in turnover margin. They have 13 picks, 82 tackles for loss. Quarterback Jamie Newman, 2,693 yards, 23 touchdowns and 10 picks, plus 487 rushing yards and 6 touchdowns. Wide receiver Sage Surratt, 66 catches, 1,001 yards and 11 touchdowns, so he's already over 1,000. And another guy, Kendall Hinton, who used to be their backup slash starting quarterback last season, he's close to 1,000, 70 catches, 953 yards. Kicker Nick Seibel, one of the best in the country, he's 24 or 25 this year. Uh, defensive lineman Carlos Basham has 10 sacks. Defensive back Amari Henderson, 10 pass breakups, 4 interceptions, and the 14, 14 passes defense is tied for 7th nationally. Um, this is, like I said, strength versus strength. Miss, Miss, uh, Michigan State, one of the better defenses in the country. Wake Forest, one of the better offenses in the country. This is where I'm going to go. I'm going to go Wake Forest here because Michigan State, they've struggled all year on offense. And Wake Forest... Their defense has given up quite a bit, but Michigan State has been really, really bad offensively. Um, Wake Four, um, Michigan State has been anyway. Wake Forest should be able to put up a few points anyway. You know, Michigan State's favored by three and a half. It's about right in terms of I think how close it, it will be, but I, I think Wake Forest is the team that will end up coming on top here for their ninth win. All right, then later on at eight forty-five or six forty-five. I'm sorry. You have Oklahoma State Cowboys. And the Texas A&M Aggies, Oklahoma State's 8-4. Texas A&M is 7-5 in the Outdoor Texas Bowl. Um, Oklahoma State averaging 33 points per game. This is just 34th and actually 16th in rushing offense, 17th in total offense. Defensively, they're right in the middle of 63 uh, in scoring defense. Uh, they have 12 picks in the year as a team. Quarterback Spencer Sanders, solid year for a freshman. 2,065 yards, 16 touchdowns, 11 picks, plus 625 rushing yards. And he was uh, hurt slash bent later on in the year. And Drew Brown filled in admirably. Uh, 626 passing, 5 touchdowns in their pick. So this should be solid at quarterback, whoever starts. But really, this is about their running back. Chuba Hubbard leads the nation nationally. Should be able to get to 2,000 rushing yards. He's run for 1,936 yards so far with 21 rushing touchdowns. Then he got on... Uh, Defense safety, Kobe Harvey Peel, 13 pass breakups, 5 interceptions, 18 passes defenses, 3rd nationally there. Then you go into Texas A&M, solid offensively, 30 points per game, which is right in the middle. Uh, 37th in scoring defense, defense uh, and 31st total defense. Quarterback Kellen Mond, 2,802 yards, 19 touchdowns and 9 picks, plus 383 rushing and 7 touchdowns. Running back Isaiah Spiller could get a thousand. He's got 869 and nine rushing. Wide receiver Jamon Osmond, 65 catches, 862 yards. Then defensive back Charles Oliver, 14 pass breakups, which is tied for third nationally. I think this is more so about the offenses. This could very well be a shootout. Um, but I'm going to go Oklahoma State here with Chuba Hubbard. He's been dynamite all year long. I think he's run for 100 yards in every game, but maybe one or two. Um, let's see here. Out of the 12 games nationally, 12 regular season games. Yeah, he's over 100 yards in every single one but one. His second game of the year, 44. But numbers like 221 rushing, um, 256 rushing, uh, 296 rushing. Um, so anyway, I think he should be able to run all over Texas A&M and guide Oklahoma State to a win there. All right, then going later on to the Holiday Bowl. Again, strength versus strength here. USC Trojans against the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. USC, and this is actually might be the first game of the bowl season where both teams are ranked going into it. Um, yeah, USC is ranked 22nd. Iowa is 16th. USC is 8-4. Iowa is 9-3. USC... Averaging 33 points a game, 36 and actually 5th in pass offense, 19th, 19th in total offense. They have Graham Harrell running their, uh, he's their offensive coordinator. And for those who don't know, he was a quarterback over 10 years ago at Texas Tech when he, under Mike Leach, he was freaking awesome with Michael Crabtree there. And they, now he's the coordinator at USC. They run a, basically a, a, a 
air raid offense like Mike Leach does at Washington State. Watch out for quarterback Keenan Silvis. They came into the year. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. JT Daniels, I think it is. He started the first half of the game, got hurt, rest of the year. Keenan Slovis is a freshman. Lights out. 3,242 yards, 28 touchdown passes, and 9 interceptions. They could have 1,000 yard receivers. Michael Pittman Jr., 95 catches, 1,222 yards, 11 touchdowns. And Monroe St. Brown, 68 catches, 879. Tyler Vaughn, 68 catches, 858. Then our defense linebacker, Johnny Houston, has 100 tackles. Then you go to Iowa. Nate Stanley's a, a pretty good quarterback, but offensively they can't get much going. They're very much about their defense. They're only averaging 23.8 points per game, which is 99th nationally. But they're 5th in scoring defense nationally, 25th in rush defense, 10th in pass defense, 12th in uh, total defense with 11 picks. So strength versus strength, number 5 passing offense versus the number 10 passing defense. Uh, quarterback Nate Stanley, 2,730 yards, 14 touchdowns, 7 picks. Defensive end A.J. Epineza, 9 sacks this year, one of the best in the country. Probably be a first-round pick uh, going in. Like I said, strength versus strength here. Really good offense, really good defense. Um, in my mind, I'm, I'm, I've seen Keaton Slovis here. I think he will be a Heisman candidate next year, assuming he keeps his job, which if I'm USC, I would let JT Daniels transfer. This guy is a real, real deal. He'll... I, I really like him a lot. I want to go USC. Their their defense is in, you know mediocre, but it's really Iowa's Iowa's offense isn't that great. USC USC should be able to move it at least a little bit. Even though Iowa's one of the best defenses in the nation, I think USC just moves it enough to win the game. And I want to go USC there. All right, then the night cap uh of the night will be at ten fifteen. It's a late game. It's the Air Force Falcons. 10 and 2 against the Washington State Cougars, 6 and 6 in the Cheez It Bowl. This is basic two offenses that are diametrically diametrically opposite. Air Force and one's a triple option. They run, run, run. Uh, Washington State's run to air. Raid offense, they pass, pass, pass. And it's Michael Lee, Cheese the guru of this. Basically, they rarely run it at all. They pass to pass, and Air Force runs to run. Air Force comes in averaging 34 points a game, which is 22nd nationally. Third national in rushing offense uh, there. And they have a really good defense as well. 19th in scoring defense, 14th in rushing defense, 40th in pass defense, and 16th in total defense. Quarterback Donald Hammond, 1,286 passing yards, 13 touchdowns and 5 picks, plus 491 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. And then you got Ren Caden Rensburg, 872 rushing yards. Tim Jackson, 745 rushing yards. Taven Roberto, 731 rushing yards. Defensive back Zane Lewis. 14 pass breakups, one pick, 15 passes defense, which was defense, which was uh, tied for sixth nationally. Then on the flip side, you got Washington State, averaging 39 points per game, which is 11th nationally. They have the number one passing offense in the country and sixth in total offense. They're 95th in scoring defense, and here's a big key: they're 78th in rush defense. So the 78th rush defense against the number three rushing offense in Air Force. That's a big, big key. Yeah, you got quarterback Anthony Gordon having an amazing year though. 5,228 passing yards, 45 touchdown passes to 16 interceptions. Wide receiver Brandon Arcanado, 67 catches, 942 yards. Aesop Winston, 80 catches, 927 yards, 11 touchdowns. And linebacker Jahad Woods with 121 tackles defensively. I love Washington State. I really like watching them play. Um, their air raid offense. I'm personally going to root for Washington State, but Air Force has one of the best overall teams, at least statistically, in the con country. They're top, basically top 20 in offense and top 20 in defense overall. It seems like they should be able to move it all over Washington State. But then again, uh, this, is, this is a tough one. Washington State, State, they can pass all over the place. Oh man, I'm not sure who to pick here. Like logically, it says Air Force, right? Um, but then you got, and I, and I and I'm one of those people that thinks that all the teams, most of the teams actually are pretty much even. Even though Air Force in the Mountain West, Washington State's a Pac-12. I think you throw that out the window. But then again, I threw that out the window with the Washington Huskies and Boise State and Washington destroyed Boise. I think it's a little bit different than that. Oh, man, I don't know who to go with here. Um, I'll go. I'll go. 
I'll go Washington State here. I think this is really going to be a really fun game. It could be pretty high scoring. If Air Force can get their triple option going, which it seems like they will, they can keep it away from Washington State. Or they might just score very quickly if, they can, if Washington State can't stop them. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll go Washington State here uh, in the end. But this should be a freaking awesome game to watch. So those are my picks and previews for the Friday Bowl games. Watch out for more. This is big weekend Saturday games, Monday games, uh, next week with the, the New Year's and everything. So come back and check them out. Peace.